This is the moment to not be going to the grocery store, not going to the pharmacy, but doing everything you can to keep your family and your friends safe. The president and the nation's coronavirus task force today warning Americans that the worst has yet to come. They say this next week, more deaths and more cases will happen. Medical officials hope they will peak and hopefully begin to fall. The CDC is recommending Americans now wear cloth masks when out in public. Keep a six foot distance between all people and stay home. Self isolate as much as you can until we get through the apex. Of the Washington. Remember, Washington state was the first to get hit, but they put in a really good program of mitigation. And if you look at the charts that Dr. Berg showed the other day, they're still down there doing well. But besides the warnings, there is hope today that our state's stay home order is working. The nation's leading infectious disease experts saying today that we are starting to see signs of a curve. Good evening, everybody. I'm Vanessa Bashania. Staying inside means we are sacrificing the jobs of thousands of people. King 5's Kayla Lafferty says many businesses are boarded up and now vandals are starting to take notice. Kingway Hair Salon temporarily closed their doors three weeks ago. Because we've closed the salon, we haven't been there. It's been vacant. Jenny Lamb and her mom, who's owned the business for over 20 years, went over there Friday to pick up mail and check on the shop. Literally every inch of the property is graffitied. The salon is one of many South Seattle businesses defaced while sitting vacant during Governor Inslee's stay at home order. So when we drove up, she was shocked. She was like, oh my God, like I've been gone for just three weeks and so much has happened. Lamb turned to Facebook. I wanted to use that Facebook as a way to reach out to the community and to, to let people, you know, have more respect for business owners and just their community to just, you know, stay home and respect other people's property and businesses. The response was overwhelming and it sparked an idea for Lamb. I wanted to use this opportunity to um, bring awareness to South Seattle and to, you know, use this wall to turn into a mural as a gift to South Seattle. Lamb is talking with local artists about turning her mother's salon into a piece of art and a way to honor the community that's done so much for her. People kind of looking down in South Seattle as not like the safest place and it's not like the prettiest place in people's eyes. I really wanted to turn that stigma around and use that mural as a way to show the beautifulness and the diversity of our community. The Asian community and the people of color down in Seattle, there's a lot of um, first generation business owners down in our area. So I really wanted to do something that really pulls us together. In Seattle, Kayla Lafferty, King 5 News. Starting today, Walmart is limiting the number of people allowed in its stores. This is an effort to promote social distancing. Most Walmarts will also have just one entrance open, which in most cases will be the one closest to the grocery department. Once you're inside, you'll only be allowed one way movement down each aisle as well, so you don't get too close to other customers. This week, Target and Costco both announced that it would be limiting the number of people allowed in its stores too. Well, here in Washington, there's been a dramatic spike in requests for food assistance. According to the Department of Social and Health Services, there were more than 14,000 applications for food stamps in mid-March. That is an 82% increase. Last week, there were another 13,500 requests, way up from any other typical week. Unemployment claims are also way up right now, leading to that surge in assistance applications. DSHS reports cash assistance applications increased by 158% for the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families program. For more information on what's available to you, you can head online to the address WashingtonConnection.org. Well, Governor Inslee has vetoed several budget items passed earlier this year. The aim to save taxpayer money right now. The governor vetoed 147 different budget items. The action will result in $235 million in savings for next year. Most of the bills killed dealt with new studies and programs, including one to hire new school counselors. The governor says a lot of good state policies will just have to be cut for the state to handle the coronavirus. Under normal circumstances, I would not veto bills that are good policy and smart investments over time. But simply put, these are not normal times. 
and we cannot sleepwalk our way through this fiscal crisis that the state of Washington will be in uh, in the months and, and perhaps years to come. When lawmakers are scheduled to return next January, the governor says they may be facing multi-billion dollar budget shortfalls depending on how painful this pandemic ends up to be. Western State Psychiatric Hospital plans to release dozens of patients because of the pandemic. Officials say as many as 60 people will be moved to group homes and supported living facilities to help reduce stress on the Lakewood facility. And in an effort to keep inmates safe, King County jails are reducing the number of people that they have in custody. County leaders say 1,285 adults are behind bars today, and that is down from 1,899 this same time last month. Officials are trying to keep only the most dangerous people in jail. They say no one in custody has tested positive for coronavirus so far. A Washington state man has been arrested in Hawaii for refusing to follow quarantine rules. So right now, any and all visitors to any of the Hawaiian islands must quarantine themselves for 14 days. Kauai police say 50-year-old Devin Martin arrived to the island on Thursday without any reservations and refused to find a place to stay. So Kauai police, they decide to help him out by keeping him a room without a view. They say it's important to remain vigilant because resources on Kauai are limited, which is why the police chief says the state's quarantine order is crucial. So for a population of over 75,000 residents, uh, you can see that we don't have a significant public health care uh, resources here. And so preventing the spread and community spread of this virus is critical um, for our public health care system. Kauai police posted Martin's arrest on its Facebook page and comments blew up. Many supporters thanking the police for keeping their island safe. Meanwhile, a shooting in Tacoma took the life of one person last night. It happened on South Union Avenue. Officers say that a man called 911, gave the address, then asked police to hurry up. When police got to the home, they found one man on the sidewalk with serious injuries. They then found a woman's body inside of the home. It is not known right now if the injured man was the one who called police in the first place. He was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. Washington Attorney General Bob Ferguson is warning people right now about stimulus check scams. They're out there. And he posted this on his Facebook page, writing, just go to show anyone could be the target of a scam and we all need to be vigilant. And you can see this photocopied cashier's check has his name on it. A reminder, to receive a stimulus check, most people don't have to do anything. So it will be sent to the bank account or the address that you already use on your tax returns. You can text the word CHECK to 206-448-4545 for more information on stimulus checks if you have any more questions. Well, in order to support the people on the front lines during this crisis, talking about our doctors here, our nurses, our grocery store workers, select schools will now be providing child care. King 5's Kira Alfallon is in Maple Valley with more. We are outside of Lake Wilderness Elementary School in Maple Valley, where staff members say they are getting anywhere from 15 to 25 kids a day. So they say this overall process has really been a huge adjustment, but they are ready and prepared to do this for as long as they need to. So for Tahoma School District staff, this has been two weeks now of providing child care for the children of nurses, first responders, pharmacy and grocery store workers in their school district. From 6 o'clock in the morning to 630 in the evening, school district staff are making sure these kids have activities to do, which vary from light schoolwork to crafts and outdoor play. One of the challenges is staff never know exactly how many kids they're going to have each day, but they make it work because they know the essential workers could not do what they need to do without their support. They are very grateful um, to have this in place because some of them don't have any other options and they, they feel um, that they need to be out there um, doing their service, um, whether it be, you know, as a health um, provider or first responder or working in a grocery store and um, without childcare, they, they may not be able to. Staff have been following public health guidelines, which means entry into the school is limited. Kids are having their temperatures checked and are screened at the door. Classroom sizes are limited to 10 and sanitation is constant. 
Staff also say that this program actually started off kind of slow, but they're getting more and more families calling in or registering their kids so that they can have child care provided for them. So that woman who I spoke with who you just heard from says she expects they are going to be taking care of even more kids as we continue into this coronavirus crisis. From Maple Valley, I'm Kara L. Fallen, King 5 News. The Coral Princess cruise carrying a number of coronavirus victims on board docked in Miami today. According to Princess Cruises, at least a dozen people have tested positive for coronavirus and two have died. More than a thousand passengers have been isolating in their cabins. The cruise line says anyone in need of hospitalization will leave first. Then those fit to fly will begin leaving on Sunday and will be taken directly from the ship to Miami International Airport for flights home. Others having respiratory problems will stay on board until they are cleared by the ship's doctors. New York racing for the worst week yet in the fight against coronavirus got some good news today. A donation of 1,000 badly needed ventilators from China and 140 more from the state of Oregon. A 2,500 bed hospital is also now open at New York City Convention Center. Spoke with Governor Cuomo. We're working very hard to get additional things to New York as quickly as possible. New York State saw more than 600 coronavirus deaths in the past day, and it is predicted to hit the peak number of cases soon. Governor Cuomo is still scrambling to find more beds, more ventilators, and more protective equipment.